Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us here in the room and uh, on the live stream, and uh, especially here on the panel. You see, we have, a, we have a full panel today because we will be talking about a very important subject in the context of the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. The question that we're trying to answer with this expert panel today is how can we reduce food waste and food loss? Um, and uh, I'll leave it to my panelists to explain what the specific angle is uh, under which we're discussing it. But before we, we go to the subject matter, let me quickly introduce uh, our fantastic panel to, do, to you today. To my immediate left, um, I'm joined by Judith Roden. She is the director of the Rockefeller Foundation. Um, Next to her, we're joined by Sam Kass, who's uh, he's joining us from the U.S., who's a nutritionist and an expert on, on, the, on the matter of food. Right in the center uh, of the panel, we're pleased to be joined by uh, President Adesina of the African Development Bank. Further down the line, we're joined by Sunny Dangote from uh, Dangote Group. He's the vice president. And last but definitely not least, we're joined by Paul Bulke, the CEO of uh, Nestle here today. And still somewhat hidden, and who will be joining us later, is James Quincy, who's the COO of Coca-Cola Company. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, without further ado, Judith, um, I know you're here to launch a w wonderful initiative. It's called YieldWise. Tell us about YieldWise. What is the initiative about? What are you trying to accomplish with it? Thank you. Um, there's a, a trillion dollar crisis, I would say, quietly brewing without the same level of anguish that we often place on other important issues that we discuss at Davos every year. This crisis is happening in the cassava fields of Nigeria, in the rice paddies of Indonesia, and in the grain fields of the United States, just to name a few. Um, you can picture these fields in your minds, right? Now imagine that one-third of everything they grow is tossed directly into garbage cans or rots just yards from where they once grew. That is the state of our global food supply chain in 2016. If you run businesses, imagine if one of your managers came to you and said that one-third of everything you managed was defective or perhaps they just misplaced a third of the inventory that you planned to sell. I've served on enough corporate boards to know that that answer probably involves somebody getting reacquainted with the job market. Um, but for too long, that's been the state of affairs in our global food system. We've accepted it with unspeakably harmful implications for people, for planet, and for profit. All of the food lost between farm and table could feed the 1.2 billion people hungry or malnourished in the world over the next two months. And it's even more pressing that we fix this leak as the Earth's population is expected to expand to two billion more people. And it's not just the people, it's the planet. A quarter of all fresh water and a fifth of all farmland is wasted on unconsumed food. Put another way, a staggering 66 trillion gallons of water is wasted every year on food that is never eaten. That is more than is currently consumed by the entire Chinese energy sector, which we spend a lot of time wringing our hands over. Finally, there's an enormous and until now mostly hidden impact on corporate profits. Every year, food loss and waste cost the global economy more than the combined 2015 profits of all of the Fortune 500 companies. An all-inclusive problem like this calls for all-inclusive sol solutions. The Rockefeller Foundation's history compels us to be part of the solution. Our involvement in the field of, our, of agriculture goes back almost a century, beginning with the Green Revolution in the 1940s. Um, we now, more recently, have funded AGRA, the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, to continue working to achieve a full green revolution <coughs> worldwide. But we'll never realize the full impact of advancements in crop yields until we no longer accept loss and waste as an unavoidable part of the system that delivers our food. That is why the Rockefeller Foundation, with our wonderful partners, is uh, launching YieldWise. It is a $130 million initiative that will work with private, public, and nonprofit participants 
in the food industry and across the supply chain to prove that we can slash global food loss and waste by one half. Just imagine, by one half. We think we can achieve this goal by thinking systemically to address the challenge. The now familiar problem of post-consumer waste in industrialized nations, which I know Sam will talk about, as well as the massive hidden post-harvest loss issue in the developing world. If we expand access to proven simple technologies and form connections between global corporations such as those represented here and smallholder farmers, we can change fundamentally the way food is produced and distributed. While other programs may look for single areas for intervention, YieldWise is the first effort to span the entire global food supply chain. We're starting our work in sub-Saharan Africa where up to half of some crops are lost to insufficient and inefficient harvesting, storage, and processing. Getting farmers access to new technologies and financing for those technologies like mobile processing units or um, hermetic cocoons could fundamentally extend the short shelf life of many of the foods that now go rotting and increase the profits for so many of these individual farmers. In due course, lo local and regional economies could be transformed. With private sector players as key partners, YieldWise will also focus on linking local, small, and large businesses that can mutually benefit from more diversified sources for products and for enhanced markets. Let me give you just a quick example of a win-win. Last year, I visited a group of smallholder mango farmers in Kenya. These farmers typically lack even the simplest technologies for handling, processing, and storage to keep their mangoes from spoiling. Now, working with new sourcers, new anchor buyers, such as Coca-Cola, one of our great partners in this effort, as well as local companies, farmers are enabled to process and store more effectively and prepare their crops more to the buyer's specification, giving them higher certainty of outcomes and greater profitability in secured markets while reducing the occurrence of waste. While we're focusing our work in Africa initially, we are also making large targeted investments in industrialized countries, where 40% of food waste happens at the retail and consumer level. In addition to private sector partners, the public sector also has a great role to play. Through the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, governments have pledged to cut food loss and waste in half by 2030. To meet this, we'll need to reform exports and other government policies that promote uh, mutual economic growth. We're pleased to be joining a global coalition of, of leaders committed to acting on SDG 12.3, and you'll hear more about that in a moment. We must fix how we use, source, and consume the Earth's bounty. We cannot afford this broken system anymore. Uh, we can dramatically reduce waste and spoilage with transformative impacts on people, on planets, and on profits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judith. Uh, let me jump all the way down uh, to the other end of the panel. Paul, I have two questions for you. Number one, as the CEO uh, of Nestle, you're overlooking uh, a huge number of complex supply chains, and I would like to hear from you, how do you aim to reduce uh, loss along those supply chains? And the second question is, I understand you're, you're working very closely with the Rockefeller Foundation on an initiative called Champions 12.3, which is referring to, uh, to the Sustainable Development Goal 12.3, uh, which is seeking to cut the global food loss and waste in half by 2030. Um, please. Well, first of all, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, to join Dr. Judith Rodin uh, and the Rockefeller Foundation in this initiative, I would say. Uh, and to participate in this press conference. Uh, look, I'm actually here to announce the formation of Champions 12.3, uh, which is linked with the, uh, the development goals, uh, the sustainable development goals. It's a coalition, a coalition of 30, for the time being, 30 global leaders uh, that are uh, 
committing themselves to, to that inspiring ambition of reducing waste, food waste, and, and to also mobilize into action and to accelerate the progress that has already been made, but put it under one, I would say, uh, roof and, and one name, uh, to, towards achieving this uh, very important 12.3 uh, uh, goal of the Sustainable De Development Goals, uh, which is linked with no hunger um, at the end of the day, enough quality food. It is uh, the 12.3 calls for cutting in half the food waste at the retailer and consumer level and reducing also food losses along the production and supply chains by 2030. So it's the integrated supply chain reduce waste. And you heard it, one third of waste is lost. One third of waste is lost in the developing countries in the fields and more in the developed countries in the kitchen. Uh, so, and what's so uh, inviting about this initiative and what the champions of 12.3 are really uh, motivating is that it is so easy to reduce it dramatically. We always speak about increasing uh, uh, food production. We always increasing more instead of also thinking about something which is low-hanging fruit that is reducing waste in the, in the system. Um, the, the champions 12.3 are CEOs like, like I am of a company, of other companies that are sharing this, uh, government ministers, executives of non-governmental uh, institution, research institutions, foundations, uh, farmer organizations, and civil society groups. You see all people who do have something to do in the supply chain of food. Um, the full list is in your handouts, and I would say this is the beginning. And, um, and actually we do this press conference to just make them uh, more interested people aware of this. I'm, I'm proud to be a member of this, and I have mentioned that Nestle, my company, has already done quite a bit in this, uh, answering your first question, what are we doing? And, 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 and uh, for example, we have uh, quite a lot of factories, uh, 460 of them, and we have a commitment of zero waste for disposal for our sites, all of them, by 2020. Uh, that is good practice that radiates into the regions we are. We have factories worldwide over. We will continue to play our part. We do that also integrated upstream, with our farmers, we have something like 7,000 farmers, 700,000 farmers directly linked with our uh, factories, and millions if you go indirectly with other suppliers we have. Uh, but with the Champs 12.3, we will work to create a, a, an, an, an environment, a momentum, uh, be it politically, but also technically, business-wise, and social, to reduce waste. And that is to do with that lead by example, and sharing what we are doing, and uh, how to reduce it, motivating others to do the same, and to identify themselves with the concreteness, the tangible dimension of the 12.3 of the, uh, target, uh, building awareness. Uh, it's, it's fascinating to know that uh, so many people, when you say one third of food is wasted, that many are saying that cannot be true, and it is true. So cre create that awareness so that also the importance is given to food loss, showcasing successful practices, which is always good, cross-fertilization, sharing, um, and, and then also uh, investing in some innovation, uh, conservation of uh, products, etc., information sharing, uh, increasing capacity to reduce food loss has to also to do with infrastructures. Uh, I'm, I'm really convinced in working together that we can go a long way. This is a long-hanging fruit. We just have to be aware, shape it, and, and go for it, for example. And that's what the web is good for. Uh, the web has shown over and over again that uh, when we start putting something on the agenda, that's why we are sitting and doing that here, that that can then be part of a more uh, multi-stakeholder discussion. We have seen it when we spoke about sustainability, uh, how that has given an impulse. Or, or water, the whole water discussion was actually started, that is now very present worldwide, was actually started here uh, in, in multi state Well, a little bit the same thing is happening here now on food waste. And, and, and it's so important for humanity. Uh, so uh, that's what we want to do, the working together. We, Nestle and the Rockefeller Foundation are doing things together already. Uh, exploring how we can reduce losses in the, in the cassava value chain in Nigeria. Uh, the, the, and, and the impacts are dramatic. Uh, this is uh, even more than 30% less. This is, uh, you can double yields on the same, you can reduce waste dramatically, halving or even more than that. And that's just by good practice. That's what we want to do, uh, multi-stakeholder. De facto also, Nestle is involved in the uh, Consumer Goods Forum, which is this association of all retailers and manufacturers worldwide. Huge, all the big uh, companies and smaller companies are involved in that association. 
uh, um, a few months ago, a few weeks ago actually, we had already a commitment there also to a resolution of reducing food waste between us, which is manufacturers and retailers, uh, to reduce and half the food waste that we have, half the food, uh, food waste we have there in the next 10 years, which is, which is quite a commitment. But you know what? It's, it's fact. It's possible. It's just, just possible if you just organize your better, and that's what we want to do. So we need bold action because also the, the size of the prize, as we call it sometimes, the upside is so big that, um, that uh, bold action uh, is going to come. It's imperative, um, as I mentioned, one third uh, of food is lost. We're speaking trillions here. Uh, so there's also a business case. It doesn't make sense to lose uh, or to waste. So it makes uh, everything more efficient. Efficiency is linked with productivity. And that is uh, something that also is shared with so many hundreds of thousands of farmers. So it has also an impact not only on company A or B. It has an impact on hundreds and hundreds of thousands of farmers, which linked in very nicely and also on the new um, initiative for agriculture. And so that's why uh, I'm motivated to be part of this. I thank you also to uh, give me the possibility to talk and, and to share uh, my passion for this. Uh, so this is a start, a start of a big thing, of a big thing that everybody was aware of, but we didn't announce it and pronounce it. And we do that now today. So thank you for your attention. And I have to say, I'm sorry, but uh, my passion is, is, is deep and big, but I have to jump out here. <laughs> uh, but I feel the passion is going to stay in the room anyhow. So, thank you, Paul. And I thank you and uh, looking forward. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Sam, I know you're passionate about the subject too. Uh, I would like to invite you to talk about the, uh, uh, the situation in the US and also talk a little bit about your own uh, personal engagement and your, uh, your work with the Rockefeller Foundation Sounds in collaboration there. Great, thank you. First of all, Dr. Roden, thank you so much for your extraordinary leadership. Again, time and time again, you, you're really paving the way. And it, it means a lot to all of us who've been working on these issues for a long time. Um, I would like to put the, the issue of food waste in the context of climate change first. Um, right now, our food system, agriculture and food, accounts for 25% of greenhouse gas emissions. 25, one, one quarter of all emissions just behind energy. Um, so we know that food and ag has to be part of this, part of this solution. We're going to have to transition uh, to a much more climate smart system, which means climate smart ag and climate smart eating. Um, but when you consider the fact that 27% of the land under cultivation around the world is growing food that ends up in landfills or that rots in the field, there is no way we could reach the, the, the targets we need in agriculture to actually solve this problem. F uh, fully, it, if food waste were a nation, if you put it into perspective, it would be the third largest emitter globally, the third largest country. That's just an extraordinary, it's an extraordinary fact. And so as, these, as food goes to waste, either in the field or ends up in our landfills, it's producing huge amounts of methane, which then just exacerbates the very problem that we're trying to solve. So part of my engagement has been, um, w one of the highlights of this engagement was a lunch cooked at the United Nations for dozens of world leaders leading up to COP21, where Dan Barber, a tremendous chef, I know you know him well, um, and I did a lunch uh, for all these heads of state based completely out of waste. And so waste means a couple different things to keep it in mind. It means the small, out of shape produce. It means the damaged, slightly bruised produce. So the first course was a salad made out of beautiful produce that just was a little off that would just get tossed. The second course was a vegetable burger made with the pulp from a juice company that would juice it and just toss it away. One of the best burgers I've ever tasted, including a beef burger. And I'm not a veggie burger kind of guy. Um, the bun was a reused bun from bread that would just get tossed. Um, the bread that came with it on the side was made from the wheat uh, grains used to make beer. The ketchup was made out of beets that were tossed away because they had damage to them. And the pickles were the t ends of the pickles that a uh, manufacturer would just cut off and throw away because it didn't fit so nicely in the, in the jar. The, the dessert was uh, a chocolate-based dessert that was a pudding that came from uh, the, a byproduct of chocolate, which is normally just discarded. It was one of the most delicious desserts I've ever tasted. And so we have to not only save the perfectly good food throughout the supply chain, we have to reimagine what waste is. 
and look at the things that we're throwing away and understand that it could be seen in a totally different way. In the United States, a third, so in globally a third is wasted. In the United States, it's 40% of food that we produce is wasted. For the average American family, uh, that's $1,500 that's just ending up in the trash. Beyond just the emotional toll it takes that we all feel every time we're tossing away beautiful food. In the context of, of the fact that in America, one in six families are food insecure, and we know globally nearly a billion are, this is unconscionable. Um, and also within our grass. It is the truly, it is truly, the, we say long hanging fruit, this is literally like the low hanging fruit. Um, so we are working very hard and I am thrilled to join uh, the Rockefeller Foundation uh, and the Sustainable Development Goals um, to really push this forward. And I'm working closely with the World Bank who is taking this issue on um, both to transition our agriculture to climate smart ag and climate smart eating, but also uh, focus on food waste throughout the supply chain um, as a top priority of really making our food system an efficient one. No other major system in the world wastes 30 to 40 percent. It's just crazy. You can't think of another example. Um, so this is the beginning of, I think, a long but um, incredibly impactful journey um, that will, I think, create momentum that we can build on on a whole host of other issues, including health. Because, by the way, most of the things are wasted aren't um, you know, cupcakes and things that'll stay on our shelves for years and years. These are, the, these are the nourishing foods that we need to get, particularly to the most vulnerable populations. Um, so I'm just thrilled uh, to be here and we'll be dedicated to working closely with the foundation and all the partners to really see this through. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, that sounded delicious and it was also a very passionate call for action. So thank you for that. Sam is the former White House chef for the Obama family, so I'm sure it was very yes. delicious. <laughs> yes, and I can, and I can say um, the president uh, really cares about this issue and knows, knows, and it, knows it well, and his wife. Yes. Um, and it's something that, that uh, they are both very conscious of and we're, and we're working very hard. The administration has taken the leadership as well and set the same goal for the United States to reduce food waste, and I think there's um, this is the beginning of something that can be a global solution uh, uh, for generations to come. Thank you, uh, Sam. James, uh, I know that you're also collaborating closely with the Rockefeller Foundation at Coca-Cola Company, and uh, that you're also thinking about the processes in your own company on how to reduce waste. Um, let us hear about it, please. Sure. Um, firstly, good afternoon. Um, nice to be among this uh, distinguished panel here for the launch of uh, uh, YieldWise. Um, I mean, I think you've talked eloquently uh, about how food waste is clearly a problem, so I won't, I won't double down on that. And, and of course, I applaud the effort by the Rockefeller Foundation to launch this effort uh, yield-wise. Uh, I think, you know, the imperative is to work together. And as you say, we, we've done some things, and, I, and I'll try and give a couple uh, of examples, but we've done them all in collaboration with governments, uh, with NGOs, with foundations, uh, and, and we're a proud partner of those programs. Uh, and let me start using my examples just with Africa. Obviously, the needs and the issues in the developed countries are a little di different to the developing countries. Uh, as one of Africa's largest investors and, and private employers, uh, we, we're really focused on trying to improve uh, the e agroeconomy in Africa because we're also one of the largest fruit buyers uh, in Africa. So let me just give you two examples. Um, you know, we, we've done two things that we think are working with, with the foundation. One kind of top-down is establish some clear principles from the medium-sized companies that we buy the fruit from. So we've been very clear, we want to see them bringing in fruit in a sustainable agricultural program uh, so that we can drive clear principles and use the power of the brand and the pulpit to help improve standards. But the second thing, much more at ground level, which is where the work really ends up happening, uh, is finding ways to put in place large programs that will help the small uh, shareholder farmers, because that's where the most of the people are employed. And we've done a couple of things. Uh, we, you mentioned the mangoes. Uh, we've done some of those in Kenya and Uganda. And we found that if we work with best practices uh, with these farmers, we can not only uh, uh, get sustainable uh, environmental practices improved, the farmers have doubled their income and the consumer has got lower prices. In this equation, uh, literally uh, no one uh, loses and we go from you know, saying that the problem isn't the low-hanging fruit 
Uh, it's literally the fruit on the side of the road, uh, and we turn that into money. Uh, and between those two things, the top-down principles and the, the programs on the ground, and hopefully we'll do many more of them uh, working with the foundation, uh, we believe that there's, there's much more that can be done, uh, and we're very hopeful that uh, significant progress can be made in the coming years. So we're proud to be part of this initiative. Thank you very much, James. Mr. President, you're not just the president of the African Development Bank, but you're also a very distinguished expert in agriculture. So uh, we would like to hear from you, um, maybe the macro perspective, if you may. What is the impact of the topic on the economic uh, situation, on economic growth, and, and what will your institution do uh, to, to help uh, address that challenge? Well, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, let me say I'm so delighted to be here uh, for two reasons. Uh, first is that I work in Rockefeller Foundation for 10 years of my career. <laughs> so um, a lot of work, I was in the agricultural division, so I'm quite excited to see that the Rockefeller Foundation, again, is taking leadership in a very crucial, important role. Second is because of the strong partnership that the African Development Bank has uh, with uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. So, Judith, let me congratulate you uh, very much on this very innovative uh, program or initiative that you put forward. Now, you've got to realize that being yield-wise uh, is also being processing-wise. And when you're processing-wise, that means oh, you're also money-wise. Right? And I think it's very clear to me that when you look at agriculture, you know, agriculture is where Africa's future really lies. Um, but if you're producing so much and you're losing so much, it means that you're basically wasting land, you're wasting water, uh, you're wasting a lot of financing, and even you're wasting the sun, which we need to actually do renewable energy as well. So I think this initiative in how to reduce the amount of losses that we have, food losses, is crucially uh, important. And it's important for us as African Development Bank. When I became the president of the bank, I have five priorities that I put forward. Two of them are related to this. First is feeding Africa. The second one is industrializing Africa. Now, if we are able to reduce food losses, actually you improve household food security, community-based food security. You also provide a lot more food going into the value chain so people can buy food at a lower cost, which is very, very important at a more macro, macro level. Uh, but also linked to that, um, I think, is um, the importance of putting this within an infrastructure context. And this is where the African Development Bank partnership with you will be important. It doesn't matter what you want to do, whether you are a farmer, uh, whether you're a small processor, small, you know, small size enterprise, or you are a big processor like um, Sonny Dangote that has uh, invested $35 million in a tomato processing plant in Nigeria. Whatever it is, you need energy. You need power. Without power, nothing works. And so what we bring to this is uh, the, the African Development Bank. We just launched actually yesterday night um, a new deal on energy for Africa, which will provide universal access to electricity by 2025, and that will help a lot of the smallholder farmers that are here to be able to process, add value to their things, and not having to be able to store as well. So that will reduce the amount of losses that we have. The second issue where we can work together with the Rockefeller Foundation is actually through the development of agro-allied industries. Because when you have agro-allied industries, it means that you have companies that will buy the tomatoes, uh, that will buy the potatoes, that will buy the sorghum, that will buy the millet, uh, that they will easily rot away, of, or, or perishables like vegetables. You know, so the development of agro-allied industries is so crucial to how we actually reduce this particular problem. Uh, and the African Development Bank uh, will be supporting the creation uh, or the development uh, of what we call staple crop processing zones, so literally bringing the private sector into the rural economy to set up the infrastructure, the water, the roads that they need you know, to reduce their cost of processing. We're doing that already with in Nigeria with uh, Dangote. And this will make sure that we'll process everything there in the rural area. You don't have to move a lot of food out and therefore suffer a lot of uh, losses that occur because of the inefficient logistic systems to take that out. The other way, um, and the Rockefeller Foundation and us, we're actually working together with African ministers of finance and African ministers of agriculture under you know, your, your, your leadership. Uh, to make sure that we make the right kind of investment on this. So it goes beyond just food waste. It's actually how we change the whole picture of uh, uh, agro-allied industries. And the last two points I want to make is the development of commodity exchanges and warehouse receipt systems. If farmers know where they can take their produce to, right, they don't have to store it under their you know, bed, under a hut or whatever, 
So the development of commodity exchanges is vital, and the African Development Bank will continue to support that uh, so that we, farmers can actually have better prices and don't have to suffer all these losses. And the last thing I just want to say is the importance of regional trade. If you have so much surplus in some areas, and you have deficit in some areas, and you don't have connection between the surplus areas and the deficit areas, of course, everything will go to waste. And so the African Development Bank will continue to invest in making sure that we improve regional infrastructure, in particular roads, rail, ports, uh, and, and transnational highways that will be able to move food from Ivory Coast to, to, to Mali or Burkina Faso and things like that. So this will also help in reducing uh, the amount of surplus that you have and therefore the amount of weight. I couldn't be prouder as somebody who has worked in Rockefeller Foundation. I think what Judith is doing here is really phenomenal because you're taking a whole value chain uh, approach to this. And let me just say that the, uh, the African Development Bank stands fully ready to uh, support you. And I, and I do hope that you can uh, also come uh, uh, to us and prepare some really nice dishes out yeah. of some <laughs> of these things I'll be able to eat. But congratulations to Judith. And, and I'm very proud of Rockefeller Foundation. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Sunny Dangote, uh, the home of uh, Dangote Group is in Nigeria, which is uh, one of the most populous countries uh, uh, on earth, and is, is always climbing that ladder, that ranking. So it's clearly an issue of, of great importance to your country. Um, let us hear about your collaboration with the Rockefeller Foundation and, uh, and how you at Dangote Group deal with the issue. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, it's really a great pleasure that I'm uh, participating with the Rockefeller uh, Foundation on this uh, yieldwide uh, initiative. And I think, uh, uh, taken back from what most of uh, the speakers you know, have said, it is really an apparent uh, situation in our hand that um, to stop post harvest losses, encourage more productivity, bringing back commercialization uh, to rural farmers, is very critical and very important. And you know, uh, in Nigeria, over 70 percent of the population, out of about 180 million, you know, people, uh, depend on agriculture. And if you can imagine, 40 or 50 percent of their post harvest is lost. That you can imagine the quantum of the, of the value. And also, when you look at it, that most of them are engaged in subsistence farming, which means they are actually farming just to keep going not really because they're making substantial money out of it compared to other developed uh, countries. Uh, our view uh, <clears throat> is actually how do we get in and participate in this agro, uh, agro value chain. Uh, in terms of um, the northern Nigeria, we have established uh, under the Ngote Farms, which I'm the chairman of that company initiated an idea to set up a tomato processing factory right in the middle of the, uh, of the farm area where there's about 17,000 hectares of land with fully you know, uh, channels of uh, irrigation since 1970s, uh, since in the 70s, and there were no any processing facility. So I set it up there where about 4,000 farmers are now engaged to grow tomatoes and we, w we are working with the input supplier companies, seed companies, uh, and also working with the state and federal government, even before Dr. Adishina left uh, Nigeria for, for African Development Bank, we're working with the Federal Ministry of Agri how to provide some assistance to these farmers. And for the first time, we're establishing uh, a buy guarantee price to the farmers, which means a uh, farmer is uh, giving a total input value, and on top of the total input value, including harvesting, we guarantee a farmer a certain price as a profit. And we believe also to put the farmers together in a cooperative manner instead of being an individual scale so that they can come together as, as a cooperative. They can now work together. They can get the access to fertilizer, access to input supply at a better price. And we, at the end of the game, guarantee them a price. So with this initiative from uh, Rockefeller Foundation, I think it is really uh, putting more eyes uh, on the cake because the farmer after harvesting, the logistic challenge is there. How do they get it to the factory? Even though we set the factory right in the middle of the farm, but some of them have to come 25 kilometers mm -hmm. to get to the farm. So even though it sounds small distance, but for them, the challenge of moving the produce to the factory is also uh, enormous. And we believe with the yield initiative, 
uh, it will bring about closing that uh, challenge of having their produce uh, to, to the factory where it will be processed immediately within 24 hours. I mean, today we've set up a factory that can process 1,200 tons of tomato every single day. And our plan is to look at all the uh, hubs of where the concentration of farmers that have also a uh, dam or water irrigation system to set up a similar agro-processing facility where farmers do not have to go far distance, uh, uh, thousands of kilometers to reach the market. And I think also down in the south, we put up another vegetable plant, uh, which is in the southern Niger and Cross River, where we are processing uh, pineapples. And we're also growing farmers, and we're giving to the farmers around to, to supply as outgrowers. And that we guarantee them a price throughout the year. And then we are buying and we're processing it. I think in March, uh, no, in about June, we should start supplying the local industries uh, with the pineapple concentrate, where the import is now substituted. And I think the whole idea is about ensuring the farmer is no longer on subsistent farming. It's actually on a commercial farming. And until we turn around this, the table where a farmer is making profit, there's going to be a continuous cycle of poverty within these farmers. And today we believe over 4,000 farmers are engaged with this uh, tomato value chain, which the uh, Rockefeller Foundation is partnering with us in ensuring the post harvest losses is addressed. And it's a tremendous uh, contribution to the, uh, to, the, to the farmers, to the whole economy in Nigeria, and to the northern Nigeria also. And we see in a couple of years, probably uh, once it is successful from March, we're going to start the harvest and we're going to start the processing. Uh, we expect in about three years, we're going to make it almost about 4,000 tons per day capacity, setting up additional two plants, which will involve more than 20,000 farmers within this, uh, this value chain. And I think it's a great initiative and uh, we are very pleased to partner with uh, Rock Rockefeller Foundation and uh, I encourage all other big corporations uh, to engage in a similar kind of tie-up where you can guarantee a certain uptake and be close to the farmers, be able to support them and get them into commercial activity rather than in subsistence activity. And I think with the, with the vision I have going forward is to ensure that uh, not only that they do the tomato, but when they do the crop rotation, we are also doing an uptake because the farmer is not only relying on tomato, but in others, you know, crop, which he, you know, the farmer needs to grow and ensure that um, uh, the whole year round, they're getting value and getting money so that eventually they'll make enough money that they'll be able to sustain the drive of, you know, removing the challenges uh, that they face on a daily basis. So we're very pleased to be partnering with, uh, with the Rockefeller Foundation and we hope that, uh, you know, it's just the beginning of a good things to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's very good to hear these very concrete examples of, of what's being done already and, and what can be done. And may all business leaders here in Davos hear your, your call to join. Uh, Judith, I think this was a ringing endorsement from all uh, the panelists. Um, uh, let's open the floor for questions. Uh, if I can see a show of hands. Uh, we have a microphone. If you could state your name and organization, please. Microphone is coming. Chen Lei from CCTV News. Just wondering, where to after Africa? Do you see this as a globalized initiative in the future? Um, we haven't really determined where, but it will definitely move. So we started in Africa, given that our partners um, were there and ready to go and on the ground, and lots of the pilots were there. But we see this as a global need and as a global activity. And of course, the part that Sam is so intimately involved with is the entire world. Uh, for example, um, in um, October at the Milan Expo, at the conclusion of the Milan Expo, 160-some mayors from around the world signed a commitment which they handed to Ban Ki-moon. Many of them were in Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, for example, committing to reducing food waste, that is, market to garbage can. Uh, in their cities, and we're already seeing tremendous progress. So depending on what the issue is, it will require different kinds of intervention and different kinds of leadership, uh, but certainly globally is our, uh, global is our uh, approach and our commitment. James, you wanna add to that? Yeah, um, just, as, um, just as it was a China example, I mean, uh, we're already working with WWF, something very similar to do, we're doing with Rockefeller with um, 
um, WWF in Kargil in China, trying to reduce waste uh, and improve the environmental footprint of the farms. We had 10 pilot farms in 2014. There were 30 in 2015. And we've now rolled it out to 12,000 uh, as we're going now. So we've made the materials available to a lot of people. And it is really about, I mean, what's going to work in Africa will be applicable and exportable to, to Southeast Asia and India. I mean, there will be a lot of common learning. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that this will travel um, uh, and help solve problems everywhere. I mean, uh, the question was what happens, what yeah. happens at the pilot farms. I mean, really, it's, it's some, some of the things are very basic. I mean, some of the stuff that the Rockefeller's bringing to Africa, some of the things we're doing, it's, uh, I mean, you can take basic examples like modern ways of irrigation, uh, the best ways of picking and storing the fruit. Don't put it in a big box, put it in smaller boxes. Uh, Rockefeller, I think, is coming out with some, you know, processing technology. So what the farmer can do is kind of pre-process it in a little way that greatly extends the life and therefore the chances of it reaching uh, the collection center. Because the reality is, uh, even with all the government efforts to improve the roads and the, and the physical infrastructure, it's going to take some time. So in order for the small farmers to actually be able to advance, they need to be able to, you know, get a better yield um, immediately, notwithstanding the kind of the ongoing improvements in the, in the macro infrastructure. So it's about some of the basics and the best practices, and it's about some bringing new technology on kind of pre-processing. Thank you very much. Um, mindful of the time, I think we have to close the panel at this point. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, uh, so if you apply for a job now with the African Development Bank, you might, uh, might be able to still uh, get the delicious meal that Sam is preparing. Um, <laughs> so thank you all for watching. Thank you for, for joining. And a special thank you to, to the panel. And uh, congratulations again to you, Julie. Thank you so thank very, you very much. much. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you.